Hello everyone, welcome back to City Skylines. We are of course in the Aurelia city where we built the big plant residential area last time. Also in the episode before that we did the intersection with all the colored lanes and the spillways for the upper lake. I would like to continue around that part of the map. As you can see, that's here on the left, just below the island city, where we did some changes to the landscaping, but otherwise it's completely open. We are going to build a big university campus here, using very futuristic looking concept, lots of open areas, public transport and so on. Let's go. I wasn't exactly sure how to approach this piece of land between the upper lake and the river. It's divided in half by the highway and it has these main avenues aiming in this general direction and also the public transport. It has the two lines. This is the first line that coming, that's coming from the island city and then cuts across the main river. And of course that's the light rail, these tracks that are coming directly from the city, from inside of the city core and continuing into that uh, planned area that we did last time. So at first I wanted to do maybe some sort of a bigger public transport hub where these lines meet and uh, I don't know, create some kind of uh, different elevations for it, maybe even like a bus terminal or something like that, incorporate that into the highway area maybe as well. But that was very difficult because all of these uh, pieces of infrastructure were arriving into this place at different elevations, like really different elevations. So it was kind of strange. And at the same time, I wanted to do some sort of a university campus in here and do some landscaping to just make it uh, more believable, this entire place. So I eventually decided to completely scratch those ideas and uh, just put the highway into a tunnel underneath all this, all this land, mostly, and uh, just uh, flatten this and prepare for some more conventional area that uh, I'm just going to use some sort of a, let's say, lower density uh, project on. So that's, uh, that's the starting ground, that's the basis for the university. Now these tracks are leaving quite a lot of empty area uh, just on this, uh, on this piece of land, so they are mostly bypassing it. But at the same time, those tracks coming from the island city are forming some sort of a natural division on this piece of land. So the university from this view is only going to be on the left, and on the right, uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going to be there. Definitely not uh, the university itself, like a continuation of it. But uh, maybe I'm going to do some more landscaping. I was also thinking of just turning it into the park because we are on the very edge of the city. So it doesn't really make sense to do something super high density there. And the university for this place is just absolutely perfect, uh, you know, the density wise. Anyway, the university is uh, finally taking shape. Uh, quite uh, quickly because I really just use a single building here and that's of course this uh, Apple campus and I'm just using procedural objects to create different variations of it. At first I wanted to just do the single building because it's quite huge, it would easily fit into this into this entire area but it felt like it's uh, not exactly, you know, that's not exactly something that's going to be enough. So I really wanted to just have more variety. So this felt absolutely perfect. So let's get a bit, a bit into the technicalities. Now the first central building that's uh, actually made from three different uh, instances of the, of the Apple campus. Now the standard building is hollow. It's just like a ring. And uh, like I said, it's absolutely huge. And it's supposed to have the entrance from the inside of the ring by some kind of a tunnel. But I decided to use procedural objects and select all the walls on the inside of the ring and merge them so that uh, it's going to be merged into a single node, which is uh, which has to be exactly in the center of the structure. And it's going to create this roof that looks like it's made of solar panels. It has a very nice looking reflection in City Skylines as you move the camera around. And it's just looking really good. So I decided to keep that. And uh, then for the central building that's uh, inside, by the way, all of these are obviously scaled down quite a lot. I decided that uh, the central building is going to be the tallest and uh, the second floor, it's not, it's not like a second floor, it might be like a fifth floor where it starts uh, being wider. You know, the radius of the building is wider and uh, it's also 
it's looking like a mushroom actually so that's just forming the central building there is one more building that's slightly taller actually twice as tall as the rest of them and that's the one connected by that bridge which just forms you know something different in here so again it's just uh, intended to provide more variation and uh, the rest of these buildings here are just single instances and a couple of them have the roofs with the solar panels just like i explained before and the rest of them don't have that they are just uh, scaled down versions of the original thing now i really wanted to have this area completely car free so the inside of the campus is going to be pedestrian only and at the same time it's not exactly small so i wanted to provide some kind of a public transport service preferably using some small shuttle vehicles at first i was experimenting uh, with the Heathrow pods, I think they're called in the workshop, but uh, I had some technical difficulties with them. So I eventually decided, and that's probably for for the better, to use the Oli buses that we are using in some different parts of the city as well. So there is like a continuation in the style. So that's that's perfectly fine. And I'm using that very narrow one unit road that I recently downloaded. Uh, I think I've been using it a couple of times before though and just repainted it using the network skins so it's uh, it's red you know that's kind of a fitting color for the buses and it just creates like a nice element in the area it just naturally uh, twists and uh, just goes between the buildings and eventually it merges together there are two roads that eventually merge together to uh, cross the river or branch of the river to the island in the river that's uh, actually where we are going to build in the next episode of Aurelia. And on the opposite side, closer to the island city, it also goes together that road uh, just uh, just near near the uh, near the crossing of those uh, tram tracks because obviously there has to be some kind of a some kind of a transfer station that's basically going to be the main entrance to the university area if you are arriving from the downtown. And I suppose that majority of people are going to be arriving from that direction into the university, but uh, students or maybe even some, some staff might be just living you know, nearby. There are going to be some residential areas. And speaking of residential areas, we are going to build one right now. So in that previous episode, I was experimenting and I have to say very successfully used uh, some of these uh, well, a lot of these uh, Green Cities DLC, low density, these Echo buildings, they look absolutely perfect for Aurelia. They already have this uh, modern, maybe even slightly futuristic style. They are already nicely decorated. I don't really feel the need, unlike in Altengrad, to just uh, get rid of all the props and trees uh, near to them because I'm not really trying to create like a super detailed areas with these anyway. So when they are already detailed like that, and I have to say quite heavily detailed as well, then it's just perfect. It's absolutely perfect. This place just looks fine. I'm just going to cover it with trees. This tree line is mostly just also like a dividing element between that and the university, and it's just filling the place, you know. Like I said, we are on the very edge of the city, so this felt absolutely perfect for it. Now, I am not, don't worry, I'm not going to be using that particular style for all of these low-density suburbs even though it would be like super fast to do that. But I do have some more like individual structures downloaded from the workshop that I still want to use somewhere in some kind of a more detailed suburb. I'm thinking of the area uh, next to the second half of the city on the other side of the river. It's kind of difficult to explain, but that's like a very future plan where I'm going to do uh, something with uh, like a low density element. But anyway, that's uh, jumping forward quite a lot. What am I doing in here? So this place needs some sort of uh, some sort of an outline. So that's going to be provided by this wide pedestrian path. I really didn't want to provide or do some kind of a geometry, like a straight geometry. I was really trying to just, uh, well, some, some kind of these roads are going to be aligned to the tram tracks, for example. That makes sense. But uh, then they are just going to follow like more natural paths because it really feels more appropriate for this area. So at this point, I had to delete quite a lot of footage from the time lapse because I was experimenting with the surface inside the campus a lot. And I wasn't really sure 
how to do it. At first, I just covered the entire area with gravel, with this kind of gravel in Aurelia that we use, it, which, uh, which is not really a gravel, it's just like a decorative surface that's uh, very easy to manage. But it wasn't looking exactly that right, and it wasn't all that functional anyway. So I finally decided to use uh, just the pedestrian paths, the vanilla gravel pedestrian paths that I'm using right here. And what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to uh, not just uh, do the paths with them, you know, the original intent of these rows is obviously to use them as paths, but uh, I am going to do them as decorations. So all of these buildings will have some sort of a, like a curb or outline around them and uh, they are just going to be connected to everything else. They have to be connected to these red, uh, red uh, bus or shuttle shuttle roads because that's going to be where people are mostly going to be arriving from and they also need to be connected to the outline white pedestrian path and also if people don't want to use the buses at all there has to there has to be some kind of a entrance just for pedestrians okay so this is me putting just the bus line through the area it's going to be doubled so that uh, buses on the bridge are going to be like a doubled but uh, one half of them is going to go right and one half is going to go left after it enters uh, from the bridge the campus so it's going to provide like a nice capacity it's just going to look better when the buses are going to be moving through the area or i should really just use shuttles not buses because uh, it's just a small pod so you are going to see that in the cinematics i really like the ollie shuttles they are just so cute moving through the city so I think I was doing this on the live stream. I'm not exactly sure, but it took a really long time. It was surprisingly difficult to do. Well, not really difficult, just uh, just time consuming to put all of these connections everywhere. I was trying to mostly do it uh, as, a, as a decoration, but also connecting the specific uh, uh, points on the red roads because that's where some of the bus stops or shuttle stops are. And uh, also... Uh, putting some invisible pedestrian paths here and there to uh, make sure that pedestrians can cross those red roads and uh, enter the buildings in specific areas and so on and so on. And also I'm heavily using the node controller because that's a very, a very important mode for these uh, gravel roads for all kinds of decorative purposes these days really with, uh, with networks because uh, these roads that are directly next to the buildings, I'm making wider by 200%, I think, and it's just nicely fitting the building all around. It's much quicker, much easier to do compared to, I don't know, putting some kind of a custom curb over the entire building. Obviously, it's round, so that would not be all that easy. And then uh, filling that shape with like procedural object surfaces or just the ploppable surfaces with gravel, something like that. I tried that. It was really, really time consuming to do. So even though this, this did take a long time, it's still much, much faster than that. Unfortunately, there's that thing where if you're going to create a new node, it's... Uh, the, uh, the original segment is going to lose the uh, settings for the node controller. So I had to, even though I already widened all the paths around the buildings when I was just, uh, you know, doing some of these connections between them, I had to just redo, constantly redo everything. So it was kind of like an iterative process in the end, but uh, it turned out looking good. It turned out looking good. I, like I said, I didn't really want to follow any specific geometry here. I really wanted to do the paths so that they will be more convenient for the pedestrians. Try to connect all these uh, entrances or like, seeming entrances of the buildings and uh, also these, this, uh, this transport hub that we are going to do later. So quite a lot of connections in here, probably burned uh, a lot of uh, network limits on this, but uh, at the same time, it's a huge area. Uh, by the next episode, you are going to see that, uh, you know, that shot of the entire city at the start again. And you are definitely going to see how absolutely gigantic this place is compared to the rest of the city. The scale is really, really big. Now, I'm thinking that this entire campus, by the way, it's not going to be all. We are going to expand the university some more in the next episode. But this is definitely the futuristic part of it, the most modern part of the university. I'm thinking that uh, Aurelia has uh, more like a technical uh, specialization with uh, with all its um, education, uh, you know, high tech stuff and some some kind of things like that. 
So it's probably some kind of a polytechnic university, maybe all these different buildings might be uh, different uh, faculties or labs or, you know, some something lecture halls or something like that. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to do some part which might be like a research center. So it's going to be just a just a, you know, full university at the at the end. Uh, quite a big one uh, at that. Now, we also need to do some uh, some kind of infrastructure here and prepare for some more expansion of this uh, island. It's not really an island, like a peninsula between the between the river and the upper lake. I was thinking of maybe just doing these low density residential areas on the rest of it, but probably not. So, I decided we're going to do sometime in the future some more landscaping, and that's why I really wanted to put that light rail uh, track uh, closer to that upper lake. So it's not really going to obstruct some kind of project in the center. And it had to be done at this point because uh, we do need to, to have the uh, direction where it comes from uh, already done for this public transport hub at the, at the start of the university of the campus area. So uh, this uh, this area is not exactly going to be all that uh, all that heavily detailed, but at the same time, that's going to help because uh, this should be more like an open, open space. So we have these two tracks, uh, you know, intersecting right there, and uh, all these uh, red roads also coming from the campus. Uh, the trams are just going to have very simple looking stops that are going to be covered with these uh, with these props, the station roofs, and also the glass in the center and uh, kind of overhanging the the red road. All of this is going to be improved. The surfaces are just going to be made much, much bigger here so that people can. They're not really going to use the surfaces that much, but uh, it's just going to look much better that uh, uh, it's going to look like it has a very high capacity. And you are going to see in the cinematics that a lot of people are going to be walking around here. So it's a good thing that I already anticipated this and made this area look like it's going to have a lot of capacity. So all these pedestrian connections here and there, uh, lots of invisible pedestrian paths throughout that entire uh, hub area so that people can cross the tracks more conveniently and go to the buses, the Oli shuttles. So it's all going to be nice, uh, nicely walkable, interconnected and all that. Uh, some detailing, mostly just benches, uh, lights, I think I put uh, a couple of them in there and uh, those timetables at the start of uh, of the stops. Oh yeah, right here, right these. Also, uh, I was paying attention to how this place is going to look like from the first person, especially coming towards the island city on that uh, on that line that has the rail whale uh, tram uh, types, right? Because that's going to be very important and I really wanted to make sure that when you are looking from the perspective of the tram, you will see the island city in its full glory, let's say. So it's not really going to be obstructed by any trees or some kind of over detailed uh, shelters of the of the tram stop. So I kind of wanted to keep it light. Well, not really light, but uh, I wanted to detail it so that it's all going to be visible and not all that obstructed. And same goes even for the light rail going from the inside of the city, because uh, there, like I said, there's going to be some landscaping. So I suppose that you're going to see just some kind of hills on your left. Yeah. And then you're going to clear them and the university is just going to be right in front of you. You know, again, in its full glory, you're going to see it right there. Uh, hopefully, at least that's the plan. You know, who knows how that's going to turn out in the future. Anyway, this is a very important piece of infrastructure. That's the pedestrian or more like a bicycle path uh, coming from that uh, planned residential area. And in here is just going to connect into the campus so that, uh, you know, people might just go into the campus without using or cycle to the campus without using public transport, or they might just cut through the campus and continue towards the downtown. I'm definitely going to uh, keep in mind that I have to continue some kind of pedestrian or bicycle infrastructure coming into the downtown. We have we have also that pedestrian highway on the other side of the river, so maybe I'm going to connect it there as well somehow over the river. I'm not exactly sure yet how. Also, this bridge that we made a long, long time ago coming from the island city uh, in the episode with the intersection two episodes back, I did some uh, widening of this uh, lake, upper lake area. So we had to also 
make this bridge much larger and uh, somehow finish it. It's not really going to be like a super fancy finish in here. It's just going to be a very simple widening of these uh, borders and connections of these pedestrian paths. Again, the island city, uh, it's going to be possible to just walk from the island city all the way to university. And uh, pedestrians in the game actually using that uh, bridge quite a lot. That's very surprising how people are just using all of this infrastructure. That's very, very nice. Now, insides of these uncovered buildings are just going to be very green. I don't really want to put anything inside that's going to be uh, just not natural. So this feels absolutely perfect. And also a couple of benches in some random orders. It might be for some like outdoors classes or lectures in you know, like smaller groups or something like that. It might be it might be absolutely perfect. Or maybe it's just like a chill area in this enclosed space. So it's must it's probably very quiet and uh, just a nice view of the trees and some flowers. So that felt perfect to do that. Also, the inside of the entire campus is going to be filled with very tall trees that are going to be pro providing a lot of shade even to the buildings, but most importantly, the paths. And uh, they don't really have that much uh, like foliage down on the, on, the, on the branches, right? So it doesn't really obstruct the open space feel when you are looking at this place from the first person. But at the same time, it provides like a shade or like an umbrella effect to this entire space. Now, those kinds of trees are probably not super natural to the rest of the map, rest of the Aurelia city. But, uh, you know, maybe they were just planted here artificially by when they when they were just making the university. So, you know, it's just uh, something interesting to do. Anyway, before and after shot, as always, as you can see, really big area covered by today's project and it's still not done. We still need to do something on the left there down on the island in the river and on the right. So. The place on the right is probably going to be sometime in the distant future, but in the next episode we are going to go to the island and do some more university uh, expansion. All right, so finally this shot of the finished campus. As you can see, a lot of people are walking all around. All of these buildings are procedural objects, but uh, I did put uh, some block houses inside of them high schools, elementary schools, university, of course, as well, and lots of residential buildings because those are kind of generating the, the most traffic in this area. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of people just walking around. That was the goal. That's absolutely perfect. Uh, cars. Cars are not allowed into the campus area, like I said. But the, from this part, you can see that there is like a little road that cuts, uh, that cuts the tracks and connects to that uh, outline road. It might be a road for like emergency services or you know maintenance or something like that. The main entrance for cars is underground. It's on that main avenue that's, uh, well, that's kind of behind the hill right now. Uh, but you could have seen it in the time lapse how I did like a tunnel entrance directly under the campus area. So I'm thinking that's the main entrance for vehicles. If you really want to uh, drive your personal car to the campus area, and there's probably some kind of a large underground garage, some elevators to the buildings, even for maybe cargo or something. So that's taken care of, right? Now, this is, of course, the terminal, the entire, uh, the, uh, the main public transport hub. It has the railways coming, rail whales coming from the island city and going back to the river, and also the light rail that we have seen in the previous episode. So a lot of people using this also in the in the background there you can see like a tiny little parking spot for the Oli buses which was like a detail that I thought was fitting uh, this line is not connected or this road is not connecting to the outside world well actually it is by the pedestrian path but I provided like an invisible bus uh, bus uh, uh, what's the call depot bus depot uh, on the other side of the river so that's taken care of and the buses don't really need to arrive into this area uh, from somewhere else on the map. And the ollies are just used by a lot of people. It's looking just uh, absolutely amazing. And this is kind of like a little glimpse of what you are you might see when you are going to uh, do the, like a first person view of those trams arriving at the island city. You're going to have the towers, the entrance towers uh, just uh, in the distance like that. It's uh, it's hopefully going to be really, really nice. Although 
We still need to finish the island city because it's not yet done. All right, that will be all for today. As always, if you liked the episode, you can help it and the channel by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. Also, if you'd like to directly support what I do here, you can become a channel member through the join button below or the link in the description. Big thanks to all the current channel members. In the next episode, we will expand the university on the island in the main river. It's going to be a research center with uh, some more university buildings, some student housing, more public transport and so on. So stay tuned for that. Have a nice week. Take care and goodbye.